for the time being, the changes in forecasts are not substantial enough to warrant a decision to act. That was what, what uh, Mario Draghi actually yesterday um, uh, said. There was nothing new about um, the ECB meeting yesterday. So euro dollar went sharply up um, going into the press conference. And then after the co press conference, the, all the gains were faded out, were sold off and euro dollar is virtually there where it has been. Um, at the start of the trading day yesterday. The market expectations are still the same. Markets are left with um, still guessing about the timing of when Mario Draghi will actually extend the time um, of or the, the uh, time length of the uh, current QE program. It will run out in March 2017. Everybody expects that the ACB targets regarding inflation will not be reached in March of 2017. So he will have to increase the length, the time and duration of that QE program. Um, uh, it's the, the only question is, when will he do it? The next meeting will be in October and the uh, um, following meeting um, on October will be in December. So everybody expects that at least in December at the latest, he will increase the length of that QE program. So it's still the ECB um, guessing game is still on. So um, yeah, then the next um, uh, next news of note, uh, in my opinion, was coming from JP Morgan. They have a quant um, analyst who is um, relatively famous for his um, precise analysis on the uh, larger moves in the equity markets on Wall Street. And he says that um, there has been a um, time period now over the summer where we had um, relatively stable macro data and a seasonal decline in trading activity, which is normal for summer months. But now he is concerned that um, this could change over the, past, over the next month. So he says that September and October normally um, bring with it a higher volatility, so 20 to 30 percent higher volatility in um, September and October, which is normal, of course. And he also says that the normalization uh, plans of the Federal Reserve will, in the end, bring higher volatility. In my opinion, he is right, of course, volume is coming back. On the other hand, if the Federal Reserve will not act in September, then it will not act in November because it would just hike rates some days um, before the presidential elections in the United States. So markets will have time to December to see if there's anything coming out of the Federal Reserve. So if there will be no September rate hike, it will be very um, positive for equity markets because it would just um, mean that rates will stay lower for longer. Next big thing besides the ECB meeting yesterday was the price of crude oil, of course, we expected or markets expected 905,000 barrels built in inventories in the United States. What the Department of Energy actually um, published was a, a, a decrease of inventories, a massive decrease by 14 and a half million barrels. So huge decrease. Um, if you really look deeper into the statistics that were published yesterday, you found out that the storm, the tropical storm Hermine, is actually um, to blame for that large um, decrease in the um, inventories. So a lot of imports coming from the Gulf of Mexico into, the, um, into uh, Louisiana, for example. They couldn't have been uh, made because of that tropical storm. So um, this is just a one-time effect, but in the end, crude markets are not interested. They, they took that inventory data as a reason to stage a massive rally, plus 5% almost in Brent and WTI prices yesterday. There is pressure building, buying pressure building on a technical, um, uh, technical level. If you look at the chart, if you go above $52 in Brent crude oil, this could lead to a, um, an activation of a bottom in formation. So an inverted head and shoulders pattern has been formed in the past months. Should that be activated by a weekly close above $52 in Brent crude oil, we activate a target of that inverted head and shoulders pattern of 78. 
So a large potential there. Um, that is definitely a market that should be watched closely today. For a weekly close in Brent above 52, weekly close in WTI above 50, 51 dollars. Actually, um, bringing a good mood to the crude markets was also Saudi Arabia. They um, uh, published that their production went actually down from 10.67 to 10.63 million barrels, so down 40,000 barrels a day in their daily uh, in their oil production per day. So that is actually um, also. Um, improving the sentiment. So now all eyes are on Algeria. There will be an oil conference uh, where actually Saudi Arabia and Russia will do the first steps to form that alliance to cap world oil production um, to, to like um, increase and stabilize oil prices. Um, they will meet in Algeria at that oil conference and talk about that for the first time. Iran has already said, okay, we have the right to increase our production to pre-sanction highs, which is slightly or is at or slightly above 4 million barrels per day, which could be reached at the end of 2016 or the beginning of 2017. And that could also be the um, time um, period, actually, where Iran could theoretically join that alliance between Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia, so might be this alliance is in the end feasible and that could be a reason for crude prices to go up to $78. Um, in the end it's technical analysis and news make the prices, it's not the other way around for technical, for technical analysts, so if just watch it, if there will be a break of 52, this might be uh, bring with it a uh, strong move in crude prices.